Hey, it's Greg Otten here with NerdingOnGuarding.com, and I thought today I'd show you how I start some of my, uh, I guess you could call them transplants, in late winter. It's uh, the middle of February, and it was warm and sunny this weekend, and this particular cold frame of mine has completely thawed out. All the uh, frost is out of there, and the soil is completely soft, and uh, really happy about that now. I think part of the reason for that is that what I did in the fall is that I filled it full of basically fresh horse manure, and I put cardboard over it uh, to sort of almost like a mulch, right? Like you know, if cardboard isn't mulch, I don't know what it is. It comes from trees. It's made from wood. Uh, not really cardboard. I guess it's the, those those brown big paper bags that they. Uh, Put leaves on the side of the road with. So uh, when I use those, you know, I, I take them from people's the end of their street or the end of their driveway, the end of the, on the street, and uh, I, I use the leaves, and then I fold up the bags and just put them away and use them for later. So here I am. Uh, I didn't screen for my compost bins. I didn't screen out any soil for planting last uh, last fall. I should have done that, didn't get around to it. So I'm just screening. This is an old baby gate that uh, I found on the side of the road. Uh, so I'm just, uh, it's got just the right size holes. They're about half an inch to three quarter inch uh, circles. And it seems to do a pretty good job. So I'm just uh, working my way across the bed and getting uh, enough uh, of this here. I'm just screening it so the, the un, unbroken down bits of manure and, and other stuff I'm just throwing back in and uh, I'm not throwing it back in where I'm taking it out, but basically I'm getting enough uh, soil here to put a nice, I don't know, inch deep layer across the top of the entire bed. So uh, yes, I'm disturbing the soil and it's not ideal, but uh, it's this or go and buy a, like, some bags of that black stuff at the store and I'd rather just use what I've got. And I know this stuff's nutrient rich because it's, it's, it's composted horse manure. It's been sitting there in that uh, cold frame. Uh, composting since uh, uh, late October so it's, it's ready to go so uh, there's all the rough stuff that stuff goes underneath it uh, holds the moisture well it's full of nutrients it's an ideal planting medium uh, horse manure is kind of unique in that sense it's uh, uh, not too strong it's relatively weak in terms of all the constituents that make up uh, uh, you know the nitrogen, potassium, all that stuff. Uh, it's relatively weak, but when I say weak, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean it's it's perfect. It's ready to be planted in. Uh, couldn't be better. Uh, a lot of people give it a a, a a bad rap, a bum rap, so to speak. But uh, <laughs> it's uh, it gets a bad rap. If you can get it from a, a good source where you know that the horses have been fed uh, good stuff and they're not full of uh, medicines and stuff like that. Here I'm just I'm just patting it down. I'm just evening it out with my hand and patting it down so it's relatively consistent. Uh, I'm going to be direct seeding in this, right? That's what this video is about, direct seeding um, in a cold frame in late winter. So last year I direct seeded uh, a good number of greens this way, 1st of March, and this year I decided to do it a bit earlier. So uh, I got another bed where I uh, direct seeded onions uh, late fall and they're growing now. And um, this bed here, I'm planting some, I think, kale. I, I plant three things in it, but I think you'll only see me planting the kale because my battery died. Planted kale, lettuce, and uh, corn mosh. It's like a, another another green, a salad green. All uh, lettuce and then the mosh or salad green, the kale. I like to cook those. Um, and I'm planting just my own kale seeds. It's like a wild kale, I guess, or a white Russian kale. Um, I started my kale in cold frames like this last March and I was harvesting them right up until New Year's Day. Um, I moved them out of the cold frame and plant you know, heat-loving plants in there later uh, later in the spring. But this just gets everything started. Uh, I, moved, I moved them out of there in uh, late April into beds, uh, you know, in the other parts, other parts of my garden where they were just exposed. So there I'm just uh, smoothing out the layer of the nice, uh, loose, soft stuff. Um, so now this is all ready for planting, but what does everybody say about horse manure? It's full of weeds, and that's a problem. So here's the solution to that. Again, you get one of these, uh, you can use cardboard for this, you can use newspaper, you can use whatever you've got, but this is the, uh, 
the heavy craft paper that those uh, leaf bags are, are made of. People just throw it away. Uh, when they're throwing away the leaves, you can use the leaves as a mulch in your garden. You can use the leaves in your compost. You can compost that with other things like seaweed, like horse manure, like whatever you can get. Um, and then you can use the bags as a uh, weed killer, worm food, uh, and a kind of mulch, right? I mean, this is basically, if you think about it, it's wood chips, right? Just highly refined. And it breaks down fairly quickly, but it lasts long enough. So, I mean, with, with some decent heat in there, that paper will start to disappear after a couple of months. Uh, it'll just start to break down, and then the worms will eat it, and different things in the microorganisms will start to break it down. Uh, by the time I want to pull the transplants out of this cold frame, I, don't, I doubt this paper will be an issue. Uh, but for now, it's perfect for preventing the grass seed that's in that horse manure from amounting to anything. I mean, the grass seed will germinate because it's nice and warm in there. I've been checking the temperature regular in these cold frames and uh, on sunny days, even when it's like minus 10, it can be uh, 20 degrees Celsius in there sometimes. So uh, the grass seed's going to germinate in conditions like that and the, it'll, it'll come up, it'll hit that paper and you know, young grass isn't that tough. Right? So it's not like bamboo, right? Uh, it's, it's not very strong, so it'll hit the paper, it won't be able to get through the weave of the paper, and it'll just die and become another source of fertilizer, right? And the organisms will eat that as well. So it's a perfect system for taking advantage of the uh, good qualities of the horse manure, while at the same time avoiding bad qualities. The other thing that this paper does is it helps retain moisture in the soil. So I don't have to be out here watering it every day. You know when you're growing transplants in your house, you're out there squirting water on them and mucking around. and uh, I find it a real pain. Last year I didn't do any transplants in my house. And this year I'm not going to do any transplants in my house. So here's the next stage. Uh, I'm putting some water on here. Uh, and I'm doing that to, almost like paper mache, uh, to help compact or pat down or just soften up the paper right just so I can get the paper pushed down so it's not moving around so I can, I can get it to conform to the contours of the soil beneath it and stick in place I don't want it moving around right once I make a I'm gonna make holes in this to plant my seeds and once I make a hole I don't want the hole in the paper I don't want the paper to move because then the paper will be over the seeds I plant, which will defeat the whole purpose. But I'm going to make little holes where I'm going to plant my seeds, and my seeds are going to come out through those holes. And all the other area is going to be covered in paper, and the weed seeds are not going to come up through this. And it's it's fairly effective. It works pretty well. Uh, so there's different ways you can do it. I got another bed where I cut like strips in the paper, and I have rows. But here I'm just I'm using this. Uh, uh, easy digger, a homey gardening tool, which by the way you can get at uh, Vessi Seeds if you uh, uh, didn't watch one of my recent videos. I've got a coupon code for Vessi Seeds, www.vessiseeds.com. You can go and use the coupon code GAVS18. Um, I've got a video, I'll put it at the uh, end of this video where you can uh, explain the, uh, the details of that coupon code. It's basically free shipping uh, on whatever you order. Anyway, watch the video if you want uh, the, the, the exact details. I don't want to get into that here. Um, so these are my own seeds um, that I saved uh, a couple years ago. Last year my uh, kale didn't go to seed, it just died. I'm um, hoping that the kale I left in the ground this year will go to seed. But see, I'm just putting, I don't know, two or three seeds. The thing about saving your own kale seeds is you get about five million kale seeds. But anyway, just put two or three, uh, just putting like a pinch of seeds in each hole. Um, once the uh, seedlings start to grow, I'll select out for the strongest ones. Basically, you just put a little bit of clump of dirt over the hole, right, enough to have something like an eighth of an inch of covers. So you pat it down a little bit so you have good contact. That's all you'll, all you gets to do. Right, that's it. Um, and you'll find when you when you if you do it this way, you'll notice this looks like a raised bed, but it isn't raised. The soil in this bed is at the same height as the uh, the ground surrounding the cold frame and so it, it doesn't really dry out right because it's not above the ground right when water uh, when there's a good rain right the water 
table. You know, gets uh, <laughs> it becomes uh, there's water in the water table, and it just seems to find its way into these cold frames. It just goes underneath and along the the, the soil that's beneath this. You now you go down about I don't know eight inches beneath this cold frame, and it's relatively hard uh, clay stuff. So um, anyway, that's the idea. A few seeds, put some soil on top, pat her down, and, and continue on. That's all all you got to do. I think my battery dies about there. Yes, yeah, so my battery just died for that camera. So I, I came out. Uh, uh, this uh, that was a couple days ago. I came out today just to finish the video. So I've planted the whole garden here. Um, it's kind of hard to tell because I, I put a little bit more water on it when I was all done, and it moved some of the soil around. But uh, I don't know. About every three inches, there's a hole. It's about an inch in diameter, and in each of those holes, there's a, a few seeds with a little bit of soil on top. All right, so I'm just trying to point some of those spots out here in a very clumsy way holding the camera in my hand but there's a spot there and uh, there's no point in making this a nice clean perfect operation right you want this uh, paper to be as dark as it can possibly be so it'll attract heat right so if you had some way of I thought of boiling some water over a fire with some you know, bark and stuff, and sort of painting the cardboard to make it dark, but I, I couldn't be bothered. I just uh, put dirt everywhere and made it kind of dirty. <laughs> achieve it. It'll achieve the, uh, the goal. Anyway, you can see there's little spots uh, every so often. So it's almost like making, you know, those little uh, seed trays that you would plant seeds in. You're kind of doing uh, an inverted. <laughs> an inverted version of that, the opposite of that. And uh, when you want to move these uh, to use as transplant plants, you just scoop them out of the ground. That's why you want each one maybe about four inches from the other one, so you can get underneath it and get the plant out without uh, messing it up too bad, messing up the adjacent plants. Uh, but also I find that they don't get root bound this way, right? The roots aren't, they can't, <laughs> the roots are unbound. Uh, since I had the camera hand, I thought I'd show this other cold frame had no roof on it until I don't know about two two weeks ago, give or take. So it's still got a, a bit of that's ice. It's like that's the top layer of soil. Uh, it's got a bit of ice on it because it froze, but it's not too bad. It's almost thawed out. I think if we can get a. It's really foggy and overcast uh, this this week, most of this week. Uh, but if we can get a couple sunny days, I think this will. Uh, thought out completely I can plant something in here as well. So I'm just planting greens in here this time of year and then I'll move them out at some point in April and uh, then plant heat loving plants in here like peppers, tomatoes and stuff like that. And I was just showing you how much that, that's ice, right? It's like an ice layer. Um, but beneath the ice that is soft and that's not the case in other parts of my garden. In the other parts of the garden I get like a, a an ice layer that's thick. You can't get a shovel through it. Um, I've got some various things going on with hoop houses of stuff trying to thaw it out. I should have had my hoop houses uh, deployed on the garden last fall to overwinter like that, but I just didn't do that. Uh, that was another mistake. Uh, here's where I planted my onions. Uh, for those that didn't see the video before, uh, slightly different approach here instead of making little holes and I'm sorry the camera work here is so crappy but uh, anyway I just thought I'd get the content out there for those that are interested because it's, it's time of year to do this sort of thing if you, if you have a cold frame already set up so I'm just showing some of those little you can see at the tip of my finger there little bits of looks like grass pretty sure those are onions um, so yeah, there's one where's that one there uh, little green spring. When onions come in, they're almost like nothing. They're, they're imperceptibly small. They're so small. But anyway, they have grown. I, I did, did. I did. I don't. Not sure if that's an onion or not. That might be some other weed. I'm not quite sure. Um, there seems to be more of those really fine hair-like things than anything else. So I'm pretty sure those are onions. Uh, we'll see in the next, uh, you know, month. <laughs> we'll see. Nothing ventured, nothing gained is my my attitude on that. Anyway, you can see the different approach here where you got, you know, uh, a one inch wide row and then, a, I don't know, eight inch wide piece of paper and then another one inch wide row and then another piece of paper. There's no point in planting too close to either side. Um, 
the sides are east-west, the long sides are north-south with the, the higher side at the back on the north side, so it's, it's facing. I'm standing on the south side of it while I'm filming this. Um, anyway, so that's the state of things right now. Um, another foggy day in Nova Scotia. There's so much fog today, you can literally see wisps of fog floating in front of your eyes. Um, almost like, uh, oh, it's kind of magical, and you never know what's going to step out of the forest on a day like this. It's very quiet and peaceful, and uh, expect a deer or something to come out of there <laughs> any minute, or some other thing, some rabbit trying to eat stuff in my garden. There's the hoop houses I got trying to thaw stuff out. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Hope that uh, gave you some ideas. Uh, if you enjoy this content, please share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.